The next item is the motion on evictions. There is also an amendment to this motion, copies of which have been circulated. Councillors Belt and Daly, would you now move and second your motion? Councillor Daly. second the motion. Thank you. Councillors Ellis and Cavindia, would you now move and second your amendment? Madam Mayor, I would like to move the amendment. I have agreed that Councillors Belton and Govindia can speak up to 10 minutes on this item. Councillor Belton. Madam Mayor, can I first start in moving this motion to um, uh, enunciate the five basic principles which I hope we can all agree with. First of all, that uh, um, our policies should not cause damage to the innocents, um, whoever they may be. Secondly, that they shouldn't be carried out in an arbitrary way. Third, that in the crisis, if you like, of August, we need a penal and social policy that is effective. Fourth, that local authority leadership is important in all this. And fifth, that housing, that eviction is perfectly valid in cases of housing management. And I stress in cases of housing management. However, clearly I want to argue that Eviction should not be used essentially for penal policy across the country outside of the remit of housing management in a direct sense. And I'd like to get straight on to that, but first of all I have to tackle a notion put around by Councillor Govindia in an article in, in the Times and indeed by many Conservatives that quotes the long-term security of a council flat or house is a privileged position. Can I say I can find no dictionary definition about privilege that comes anywhere near to meeting that criteria? It's certainly not the kind of privilege that members of the Bullingdon Club aspire to. It's certainly not the kind of privilege that many of us aspire to. It's not what we mean when we talk about privileged classes. But in a way, we retire from that, the Conservative Party, by saying subsidised housing. Well, actually, no. This year, Wandsworth contributed, Wandsworth tenants, to be more accurately, contributed 22.6 million to the National Housing Revenue ex Account Exchequer, and that, for the, the third year in succession, contributed to the National Exchequer and us, the taxpayer. This is an interesting kind of privilege. The truth is the majority party have a grace and favour view of council tenants and council stock. That it is a grace and favour gift in their hand, a little bit like a feudal barony. It is not. It occurs, our powers are there as a result of act of parliament. Much of it is a statutory obligation. It is not something we can withdraw because we feel like it. But those are the outline principles. I want to go back to the details of eviction itself. And the first of the principles I mentioned was that the innocent shouldn't suffer. And of course, I can be as emotional as anyone else about the innocents who run the shops on Battersea Rise and about all the people who are terrified, including many of my constituents. With due respect to people being emotional about that, that is the easy bit. What is more difficult, and what takes a bit more courage, is to stand up for the innocents fairly closely associated to the guilty or the alleged guilty. That is a completely different and more arduous task, to stand up for their rights, and that's what I think we should be doing, standing up for their rights. Councillor Govindia's article, I don't know whether it was his heading, but the article is headed, Evicting Rioters is Being Fair to Their Neighbours. Well, I can assure you that in the, fame, the notorious case we're talking about, that's not the view of the neighbours at all. The neighbours are at the moment collecting a petition asking the council not to proceed with this. And why would they? Because she works for a charitable organisation on the estate. She runs a support group looking after or trying to assist largely single mums. 
She's well known on the estate. She brings kids back from school for, for her parents, for her neighbours. She looks after them whilst they're at work. The last thing those neighbours want is for this particular person to be evicted. So can I just suggest that concern for the innocents, um, even if associated in this case to the alleged villains, but to the villains is of some consequence. My second principle was that it should not be arbitrary. And of course it has to be arbitrary. There is no way it cannot be. I've checked out with the housing director. Is there a system for the courts to notify uh, the, the council of people who are charged or convicted? No, there is not. And that's no great surprise, is it? There might be special steps right now because of the events of last August, but no, there is not a system. And you can see why the police and the courts wouldn't particularly want there to be a system. It's interesting also that, talking about the arbitrary nature of it, I mean, if you think of that in logical terms, there's 80,000 prisoners in this country, give or take a few. If the proportions are anything like they are in uh, Wandsworth, then 20,000 of those will be council tenants. If you take uh, whatever percentage of that may apply, there must be 200 council tenant families in this borough with their menfolk usually inside right at this moment. Are you going to apply that to all them? Are you going to put them all on the streets? Surely not. Indeed, it's interesting, a reference to an education committee paper tomorrow night, which has already been mentioned. The 14 10 to 17-year-olds who have been charged, five of them, I happen to know because I've asked, five of them live on council estates. These five are beyond the age of criminal responsibility, but as minors, one might think that uh, their parents have more responsibility for them than the, person, the woman who's been faced by addiction. So in principle, although the measured paper, which Councillor Gibbons is quite right saying, is measured um, and clearly does not say they should be evicted, but in principle, if you're not going to be arbitrary unfair, then all five of those should get the eviction notices tomorrow. Indeed, I'm fascinated to know why they have not. So the second principle about the arbitrary nature of it. Interesting enough, by the way, one of them is a looked-after child. And it must have occurred to Councillor Tracy and Councillor Dawson, who I see is missing at this point, but as Cabinet Member and Chair of the OSC, in principle, they will know that all 60 of us should be evicted as being in loco parentis. And I suggest that Councillor Tracy and Councillor Dawson should be the first of them as being more in loco parentis than the rest of us. <laughs> but in the longer term, we cannot, of course, rely on the simplistic, platitudinous analysis of criminality, pure and simple. Just possibly the Prime Minister is allowed to get away with that on the morning after the major riots. I think that's probably acceptable in a press conference outside number 10. And it is clear, as Councillor Osborne said very clearly, that there was some criminal activity, possibly a majority of criminal activity. But it's also true that there's a match between uh, those charged and their addresses, that is, and the most deprived wards in the country. There is a match. Not an exact match, but there is. And I think Councillor Boswell may talk further about uh, the implications or the, uh, the genesis of what happened. I could, of course, say a great deal about the judicial side of it, like guilt before trial, like double jeopardy, like the impacts on tenants rather than, say, late leaseholders. Two guys, just imagine, two lads, next-door neighbours, go smashing the street apart. Absolutely. But one of them is a tenant, and the other one's parents struck lucky and a leaseholder. One gets six months inside. They both get six months inside. One of them gets evicted, and the other one's family doesn't. Is this fair? Of course it is not. But I think Councillor Daly will talk a little bit more about that too. 
I could also talk about the impact on the majority, because the majority, if this eviction process were to go ahead, would be uh, affected, would be women and children. Now, I don't want to label this as a sexist um, policy, because everyone dismisses that immediately. But the fact is, the majority will be women and children. And is that what we do to maintain a socially cohesive society uh, where families are... Well, uh, the Tory party has something to say about policies about families, doesn't it? Finally, there will be, finally, there will be a descent into the contract argument. They signed a contract. How many of you have ticked boxes this week buying a piece of software or whatever it is without reading every single word of the contract? Now, that's, that's minor. It doesn't really matter. How many of you signed the contract before your boy was even born 10, 15 years ago when you had no idea that this might be happening? How many would you, of you would retreat into that and then get the ultimate cop out of all say, it's the county judge's decision. The ultimate cop out of all local authorities who conduct their policies on that basis do not deserve to have more power devolved to them. Make the decisions for yourself and be proud to stand up for them. Mr. Mayor, I think I should, as a point of um, public ex explanation, if I may, as I was named, uh, just point out to the council that I don't hold any um, so particular uh, uh, corporate parenting responsibilities above any of the others in this chamber. We are all equally uh, corporate parents. No, you did say, in particular, I, uh, in particular, you said Councillor Tracy and Councillor Dawson. I would like to just point out, though, that uh, on the day in question, um, I did take my corporate parenting responsibilities very seriously, and I did ask the officers to telephone all our foster carers to make sure that our youngsters um, were not out on that particular evening. Unfortunately, the youngster in question comes from much further afield and who already started her journey. Um, and that is an extra question, which perhaps we will discuss at committees tomorrow night, how do we actually make our youngsters that we are corporate uh, parents for feel responsible and some responsibility to the community that uh, are supporting them? Thank you, Councillor Tracy. Councillor Ellis. Uh, Madam Mayor, anyone reading this uh, motion or, or hearing what we've just heard uh, could be forgiven for thinking that this particular policy is in some way unique to Wandsworth uh, and is fairly recent and was drawn up on the back of an envelope uh, somewhere around the uh, 8th and 9th of August. Both of those uh, ideas are complete and utter nonsense. I asked some very senior housing officers who've been around for a very long time earlier today if they could remember when this clause about tenants being responsible for the actions of the members of their household. And the answer I got was as long as anybody can remember. The same terms and conditions are in tenancy agreements of council tenants throughout the country and I believe also for all housing association tenants. But our own particular policy, which is uh, 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 number 31 of the tenancy agreement, uh, largely started life as long ago as 1995. And the reason for that was that a group of tenants were so concerned about criminality and antisocial behavior that they wanted to strengthen the tenancy conditions. Coincidentally, the then government uh, uh, also was preparing the amendment to the Housing Act 1996. And so the combination of both of those uh, is the, uh, the genesis of our current housing uh, tenancy agreement. Uh, during that 15 or 16 years, no one can ever recall any councillor or council tenant or resident association uh, requesting that the tenancy conditions uh, should be reduced in some way. If anything, we get the opposite. Uh, our tenants, particularly uh, the law-abiding ones, uh, which is the majority, uh, are, are looking for far tougher sanctions against those people, uh, the minority of tenants, uh, who uh, misbehave. The antisocial behaviour policy was uh, uh, also... Uh, 
debated far more recently uh, in, uh, 19, in June 2010 and uh, was of course agreed by the council uh, and uh, unanimously agreed, I have to say, by the Housing Scrutiny Committee, uh, which of course included uh, Labour members at the time. With regard to locality, which has also been mentioned in the motion, um, the bill refers to the locality, but it doesn't actually say what it is. And in 2008, the council had a consultation with our tenants who overwhelmingly supported the proposal that the locality should be described as the borough of Wandsworth. That was also approved unanimously by the Housing, Housing Overview and Scrutiny Committee in November 2008 and by this council in December 2008. And some of those members who voted for that, that particular, those particular occasions uh, are actually here this evening uh, and will possibly be voting against it.